So whether you're a new embroiderer or you're an experienced embroiderer and pushing the bounds of creativity, a lot of times we have, I like to call them lone survivors, things that just didn't quite come up to what we had our expectations of. So what do you do with those? Well, I'm gonna say we make gift bags and gift wrapping out of them. I'm Kathy, this is Sewing Tech Talk, and let's get ready to wrap it up. So you know, I think there's two kinds of embroiderers. The kinds of embroiderers who test and the kinds of embroiderers who wish they had tested. So a lot of times when you're new to embroidery, or like I said, if you're an experienced embroiderer and you're pushing a creative idea and checking something out, a practice piece is a pretty good idea. And a lot of them turn out great, they can work, but sometimes they kinda just miss a little bit because we're learning, aren't we? We have a learning curve. So here's my suggestion for what I call those lone survivors. We can take those and we can make something really fun and useful out of them. I like making gift bags because, well, I don't know what it is about wrapping paper. It's nice, but it always, and it's pretty. I love a pretty piece of wrapping paper, but I just hate it being wadded up and thrown away after the gift is open. So if we're using our fabric and our samples to make gift bags, we're kind of going a little green, aren't we? We're kind of making something that can be reused and even used after the gift, and maybe it's part of the gift. So. Maybe you have pushed the envelope, and I know I have. It's kind of my job to kind of come up with creative stuff. And some things I've done, well, they kind of miss the mark. So for example, when I made some lace, here's a pretty piece of lace embroidered on a top of some, some netting fabric. Well, it turned out okay. But you know, lace really needs to be a rayon thread and an embroidery bobbin on the back. This turned out okay, but it's a little stiff. It would be a great embellishment for a bag. So that's one <laughs> missed opportunity. Here's a fun one. I wanted to do an outline stitch and I wanted to color it in with a colored pencil. I used variegated thread and it turned out kind of pretty. Now this would make a really pretty bag. So sometimes they come out and they're okay, but you haven't found that right project for this technique to work into. And you have a lone survivor. This is a fun one. Sometimes you do an experiment. Now this is cross stitch, and I wanted to see how the cross stitch turned out when I'm doing machine embroidery. And I like it, but I think I could have made some better color choices. So this one, I just kind of made into a glass case, or it could be a gift bag that could hold like a check or a gift card. So it doesn't matter the size of it. If it's small, you can add fabric onto it. Here's one that I think is kind of fun. Oh my goodness. This is uh, my experiment with doing a shadow embroidery. And as you can, maybe you can see, I kind of just missed a little bit. Uh, not so bad, but you know, with practice, I got a little bit better lining things up. So it still makes a great wine bottle holder. And yes, we're gonna talk about making a fun uh, bow today. This was a fun. I took the same design and I layered it over and over on black fabric. Isn't that pretty? It's the same design done with different color threads. And it turned out really nice, but I made a gift bag out of it because I don't have the project yet to use it on. And if you make it, put a pretty bow on it, <laughs> that could be even just part of the gift itself. Here's another one. This is kind of a fun embroidery. And I made a drawstring bag. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. And just take some vinyl, stitch the vinyl on the front using a, using a non-stick foot. I use the Ultra T feet. Stitch that pocket on there and the gift card can go in the front and a little gift can go on the inside. So all kinds of fun things that you can do. So now let's talk about how we can make a, a very simple gift wrap. So here's a very simple gift wrap. You may be learning how to use your embroidery machine, playing with different stabilizers, because there's a ton of different stabilizers out there. I have a handout for this, for this video, and uh, it talks about the different styles. We're gonna talk about making the bow. We're actually gonna make a little embroidered box a little bit later. 
But there's also, if you look under my handouts, there's also the stabilizer workbook. When you are learning to do embroidery, there's quite a few stabilizers that are available to use. And if you're new to one, you might want to do a practice, an experiment, to see how it's going to work out. What do you end up with? Well, you might end up with one of these lone survivors. So try to do a new project and learn something new, but don't be too stressed if your first attempt maybe isn't the ultimate solution. Maybe it isn't exactly what you shot for. Don't let that discourage you. Move on, but you can use that practice piece for something. So here is a real basic Real basic way, oops, real basic way to use a basic, basic embroidery. You can make what's called, I think in Japan, it's a, it's a wrapping cloth. Now, I'm not going to try the Japanese word because <laughs> I'm going to work, <laughs> I can't speak Japanese. But let's talk about a couple basic ways that we can make some basic um, flat piece of fabric that will work as a wrapping cloth. And then we're also going to talk about making a basic bag. So when I come over to the sewing machine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch around these two pieces of fabric. I've embroidered the name in the corner. This might be your first experiment with doing a font and playing with stabilizer. But there's a way to do the corners and there's a way to make the opening. So let me show you that. So at the machine, I am uh, so I've selected just a basic straight stitch and I've done my first corner. If you notice what I've done is I've called wrapped the corner. And let me show you how that works. It turns out to be a very precise corner. So when I'm stitching off the one side seam, I stitch off the edge and when I cut the, after I cut the thread and I'm coming down the other side, I'm going to fold that corner down. I'm going to pick my straight stitch and just stitch that seam. When I come to the end, I'm using the Baby Lock Altair today, and it has a set of built-in scissors. So I'm going to clip my thread. Now I'm going to do the last corner, but I'm also going to make an opening for turning this right side out. So I'm going to turn this next corner, lower my presser foot, and I'm going to come to within a few inches of where I started. So there's an opening that's big enough to turn this fabric through. Now, here's a cool trick. If I sew off this, the edge of the seam, if I turn the machine, turn the fabric under the machine and stitch off the edge, what's gonna happen is when I turn this right side out, because I stitched into the seam like this, it's gonna pull that fabric in. And I'm gonna have an opening that I could be proud of. So I have the two sides stitched like this, and I've turned all my corners with that folded edge. Now I'm just going to turn it right side out, and you'll see that I have a really cool wrapping cloth. This is a great way to use up, say, a fabric, the uh, fabric I call it, what was I thinking fabric? You could have some really pretty fabric that you pick up and you don't even know what else to use for. So it's going to turn these corners really pretty. Let me get it so that you can see it. And the embroidery, we're going to punch that corner out. You've got to work it out. You're going to have to press it as well. But there's my Mary in the corner. And let's find that opening. Let's find that opening. <laughs> it's like giving birth to a project. Here we go. So what happened is that because I stitched on those edges, it pulled those in. Now I'm going to press it, and I'd probably top stitch around the whole thing to finish off my cloth. And this just becomes like a wrapping cloth. You can use it to wrap a gift. You can just lay it over the top. Here's my gift now. Who wouldn't want a piece of wood? <laughs> you lay it down and you can literally wrap the gift with your pretty, beautiful piece, put a bow on it, and it's going to be much more elegant after I press it and top stitch it. But you can see that makes a pretty fun wrapping for a gift. So that was pretty easy, pretty basic, pretty simple. Now let's talk about the basic process of just making a gift bag. A gift bag 
really is whatever fabric you have on the outside outside and you're going to kind of want to have a lining as well so what I do is I take my fabric and this could be one piece of fabric that would go uh, this could be wide it could be short it could be huge it could be much smaller but I have my fabric now on the top part of my fabric I'm sewing my lining piece so I have a long skinny piece of fabric now if I want to make a drawstring at the top what I would do is I would do the same on the other piece or this could be one long piece of fabric it could be multiple stitch outs multiple load survivors that you've sewn together to create this big rectangle of fabric and I put a <laughs> put a buttonhole on the top if I'm going to make a drawstring type closure so let's take this and then all what we need to do is we're going to sew either the one seam to sew it all together or we're going to sew our side seams so we're going to line it up put it under the machine and it's just a basic straight stitch on either side you get really used to those scissors <laughs> okay here we go with the other side now if this was one big rectangle that could have been all the seams that I needed for the side seam but this happens to be two separate pieces so let's put them together and we're basically creating a tube now I think you'll admit that was some pretty easy sewing now to complete our bag now we have our tube now to complete our bag what we need to do is we need to sew the both of the bottom seams so here's the bottom seam of the exterior fabric that's the fancy part on the outside of the bag and you're just sewing across now I need to sew the bottom seam of the lining but if I sew it across there's no way to turn this right side out is there so I'm going to use that same trick I'm going to sew up to here and off up to here and off and that opening will be an opening that I can turn the bag right side out but it'll be hidden on the inside of the bottom of the bag so here we go we're going to stitch across stop pivot use those handy dandy scissors and do that on the other side now we're using the baby lock Altair which is a great embroidery machine and we're going to embroider in a little tiny bit but it also has some amazing sewing features so I have a feature on this machine called pivot because if you notice I'm coming up there I'm stopping the machine I'm lifting the presser foot I'm turning it around well that's great but it'd be nice if the machine lifted the foot for me so basically all I have to do is touch a button on the screen called pivot now when I finish when I stop sewing I take my foot off the power pedal what's going to happen is the machine's going to lift that foot up for me isn't that convenient now when I turn I'm going to stitch off the edge it automatically lowered the foot for me when I use my scissors ta-da it actually also lifts out the foot so I can bring out my project now really all I have to do is turn it right side out and finish sewing my bag which is just that top edge now turning it takes a little bit if you're going to make multiple gift bags you might want to consider doing all this part getting everything sewn and then while you're watching a movie something on TV streaming what is it you do the marathon which is the binge watching <laughs> it'd be easy to turn all these while you're doing that because it doesn't require any brain work whatsoever but it does take a little bit of fuss now this bag is an experiment that I did with trying to um, use a, a transfer paper to transfer an image onto fabric it worked out okay but not quite the best and it's still okay it makes a fun bag 
to use for a kid with that little candies on the front. <laughs> it doesn't want to come out. <laughs> now here's a lesson. I should have made the little hole a little bit smaller, right? I'm a little bit larger. <laughs> All right, ta-da! So, we got the bag through. There we go. We pull out the lining as well. Now, really, what you're doing is, you're gonna do a little bit for more finessing. Take the lining, put it in on the inside, and definitely press it out. And you have a pretty decent, fun little bag. Isn't that cute? Now, with that buttonhole in the very front, I can top stitch around here and make a great little bag that would be fun. And I think if you give this to a, to a child as a present, they might like the bag. You know, you give them a, a toy and they play with the box more than they play with the toy. So that's kind of fun. Basically finish it out by doing that stuff that top edge. On the bottom, I could do what's called boxing a bottom, where I would fold the other, fold under, and stitch a little triangle on the bottom. But you can experiment and see what you like. Not all bags have to be the same. So that was pretty easy, and that was pretty fun. Now, the Baby Lock Altair is also an embroidery machine. And like I said, we were dealing with some embroidery test stitch outs that we did. But we can do something that's specific to create a fun little three-dimensional project by and experimenting with what's called IQ Designer on the machine. The Altair has a program called IQ Designer where you're creating your own embroidery. And you know, you might be experimenting with that if you never have done it before. So I come up with a fun idea. I think let's make a little embroidered box. Pretty cool, right? So what we need to do is we need to change the machine over to embroidery and we're going to dip our toe into IQ Designer just a little bit. If you're new to that program, then this is a fun way to do your maybe your first project in IQ Designer or maybe you need something quick, fast and easy and you want a quick project that's not going to take a lot of time. So let me get the embroidery unit for the Altair. I'll switch it over and when we come back, we're going to do a fun little three-dimensional gift box. I think that's pretty cute. <laughs> so now let's create some fabric, some embroidered fabric for our little box. It's pretty simple. The Baby Lock Altair has a program called IQ Designer, and it's where you can create your own embroideries right in the machine. Now, this, like I said, this might be a great first product project because we're just going to create some fun fabric. Now, in your handout, I tell you the dimensions of the little box. Let's go over to IQ Designer and then we can see. So, at the screen of the machine, I'm going to touch IQ Designer, and that opens the De IQ Designer workspace. Now, for my little box, this is an origami gift box. I need an eight and one half inch square. So, I'm going to touch the shapes key. I'm going to touch the square. Okay. Now, when I touch the size, I need to change this to inches so that I know I have an eight and a eight and a half inch box. It's at millimeters right now and I'm going to switch the machine over to inches. There we go. Pretty simple. And I can switch back and forth. Now I see I need to make my box bigger. So let's touch our make it bigger all around key. So we have an eight and a half inch box. Now the Baby Lock Altair has a hoop that's nine and a half by 14. And it also comes with a hoop that's nine and a half by nine and a half. So I can do a pretty good size box. Oops, bigger, bigger, bigger. So I'm looking for 8.5. Oops, little bit big, little bit big, little bit big. There I go, perfect. Okay. Now, what I want is I want the inside to be filled with a really fun decorative embroidery pattern. So this is where I go to choose a decorative embroidery pattern. If I touch this box right here, then I go select. I have all kinds of choices of all kinds of fun different stitching designs that I could use. Hmm, I don't know what to use. Let's see, I use this on the inside. Let's try, let's maybe try this one for the outside. Okay, I can choose a color. I'm going to stitch it whatever color I want, but I'll do red so that you can see it. Touch the bucket, 
touch inside. Now that's not exactly what it's gonna look like, but it's kind of a representation. Now I wanna make sure there's no stitching around the outside edge. So I'm gonna to touch this and I'm gonna say, I really don't want it to sew. Okay, once again, I touch the bucket, touch the line on the outside, and I'm good to go. Now in those few touches, I've created an embroidery design. When I go next, what it's gonna do, it's gonna stitch this pattern. It's gonna stitch around that outside edge so I have a cutting line. Let's see what it actually looks like. And I could have made choices if I wanted, this, the creativity is unlimited. Oh my goodness, what a pretty box that's going to be. So I need to stitch this out on my fabric. If I want to save it into the memory, if I want to make more boxes, I'm going to touch memory and put it into the memory of the machine. Now, let's send it to the land of embroidery. There it is. Now, I basically, all I really need to do, I've threaded up my machine with a color that you can see, and I'm going to be stitching my eight and a half inch box with a really pretty fill stitch, and it's going to create a really pretty box. So basically, all I need to do is at the machine, I'm going to lower the presser foot, I've threaded it up with orange thread, and green means go. Pretty easy. So after embroidering, all you do is you trim that, you take it out of the hoop, trim the outside edge, and following the instructions that are in the handout, you're going to mark the center and fold the box. It's a simple origami gift box. And look how cute it turned out. Look at how fun that is. Now when you get to this stage, you could either glue with fabric glue on the inside or use a fusing product. And <laughs> I think it turned out really cute. Now here's the box I showed you at the very beginning. And it may look sort of unimpressive with its pale pink thread until you know the secret. This blocks, box is embroidered with glow-in-the-dark thread. So so I think you can imagine the possibilities of a box that glows in the dark with a cute design. So these are really fun gift boxes and it's a simple way to learn your IQ designer and to have fun playing with your machine. Now I promised you a, I promised you a, a, a bow. So here's my bow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the button sewing on feature of the machine. And I'm going to engage the scissors so that after it sews the button, it clips the thread. So how easy is this? Well, the instructions are in your handout. What you have is a wider piece of ribbon and a smaller piece of ribbon along the inside. And then you're going to tack along the edges with that button sewing stitch, making sure you don't catch that inside ribbon. And it goes really quick, fast, and easy. So here I am. I've already engaged that stitch. I need to go opposite this one. I'm simply going to lower the foot and when we stitch, we're going to do the button sewing stitch. At the end, it's going to clip the thread automatically because I'm worth it. <laughs> and that will do the last little one. And now I have this cool ribbon bow. It's a bow. You can't see that yet, right? You grab the inside ribbon and you pull it and look, you are the package master. Look at how pretty that ribbon is. <laughs> so I think that kind of wraps up, wrap it up. <laughs> I hope you had fun learning about just making basic gift bags, making a fabric wrapping cloth for your gifts, making a fun bow, and most importantly, making the cutest little gift box ever. I'm going to send it off to George. He's going to tell you a lot more about the Altair because it's not only a great sewing machine, it also does some fun embroidery adventures as well. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Kathy. As usual, that was an incredible presentation. The Baby Lock Altair is dollar for dollar the most advanced machine in the industry. It has a large 9.5 by 14 inch embroidery area, plus 494 built in beautiful designs, 30 of the most amazing fonts that you can arc and array and edit, plus many large beautiful monograms. 
you have the ability to create a design without a computer with the IQ designer. You can take an image from a phone, send it to a machine, and it turns into beautiful embroidery instantly. You also have an automatic applique creator to create great borders around names and, and other embroidery designs. Plus, of course, we love our never miss needle threader and it also cuts all the jump stitches that you want. Now, it's not just for embroidery. This is an incredible machine with 11.25 inch opening. It also has a uh, automatic fabric sensor. This fabric sensor senses heavy fabric like denim and sews automatically from there. It will also sew on lighter fabric like Trico. It will sew elastic. It's incredible. Now for the diff real difficult fabric and for quilting, it has a digital dual feed with a belt system that controls all fabrics perfectly. It also has a laser guide so you can guide for that perfect seam allowance. It's incredible. As I mentioned, this is dollar for dollar the most advanced machine in the industry. We have a special package right now. The total package value is $14,999, but we have it on sale for $8,999. We're offering free shipping across the country as well as we have interest-free payments of under $188 a month. But that's not all. We have a special bonus for a limited time and while supplies last, we're including 63 spools of beautiful embroidery thread, two separate design collections by Anita Good Design, which has over 600 design files in all different styles. We're including stabilizer, all kinds of needles, bobbins, and a membership to Love of Knowledge. We're here, you're gonna see all kinds of demonstrations and techniques on the Baby Lock Altair and other sewing techniques. This is for a limited time. But I also mentioned we have interest rate payments. Now, for those who don't want to finance, we have even a better bonus. So give us a call at 1-800-865-9664 or click on the link to order today. Bye for now.